This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In Nigeria, militants are calling for former U.S. President Jimmy Carter to mediate talks between rebels and the government and hostilities in the oil-rich Niger Delta. A statement reportedly from the Movement for the Emancipation of the Niger Delta, or MEND, says the group has offered to stop attacks on oil production facilities if Carter intervenes. Carter said he would consider stepping in if he was also invited by the federal government to do so. MEND has claimed responsibility for attacks on oil installations in Nigeria this past Last week. The group emerged in 2006 when they kidnapped oil workers and emailed pictures to news desks to bring attention to the plight of the inhabitants of the Niger Delta. The Nigerian government, along with foreign oil companies, have reaped enormous profits over the years from the sale of Nigeria's oil and gas reserves, while the residents of the Niger Delta live in abject poverty. The region is plagued by high unemployment environmental degradation due to oil and gas extraction and a lack of basic resources such as fresh water and electricity. Nigeria is Africa's number one oil producer, accounting for more than a million barrels a day. This is an excerpt from the upcoming documentary, Sweet Crude, that highlights the plight of the people of the Niger Delta. The one thing that people need to know is that for every barrel of oil that comes out of the ground in the Niger Delta, 60% goes to the federal government, 40% goes to the corporations. And the understanding was that, okay, the federal government will out of its 60%, plow some back into the region. But that is not happening. 90% of the resources that sustain Nigeria are being tapped from majorly oil and gas. No medical attention, no food commodities, no housing, no road, no electricity, nothing at all you can talk about when we're talking about the inhabitant there is absolutely nothing it's 100 percent zero if they leave it will not affect us in any form fine we'll feel the impact of their presence as the environment will become normal again. yes if they leave the better if they if leave they, if they leave we will feel if, the impact if, of, we will if, feel if, the impact of their absence in the sense that our environment will become normal again gradually we should be given the right to control our resources. Yeah. Because resource control is our right. Yeah. We are not begging, it's not a privilege. It's our right to control our resources. Yeah. Yeah. This environment has to stay for generations yet unborn. When the generations come, they will miss something on the ground. Over time, the activities of the oil companies are not helping the people of the Niger Delta. And if this situation is not checked, the future generation will be wiped out. I mean, I, I care, and I mean, it's, 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 there. it's, it's a passion I have. And I, 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 mean, I appreciate that Chevron even gives opportunity to express that passion. Close to 30 years ago, it was not like this. Wow. As you drive around the states, you go into Costco, and you sort of start thinking about, you know, what you just saw in, in, in the Delta. And, and then you look at your children and you say, my God, you know, this is, these are things that my children are growing up in this wonderful sort of American environment. And they're great, but, and then you look at the children in the Delta and you say, there, but for the grace of God, could have been my children. Right now, we are born from our grandchildren. I don't even know, know what we are going to live if this happens here. Where are we going to go? Where do we go? Where do we go? Any, any, any kind of flood now, you see everybody here being swept out. If they can have a means of actually having money to train the children and then to have a better livelihood, that they will be very happy. There is no school. Even the schools that are there, they are not teachers to prop up these people. The motivation to even go to school is not even there. Even if you go to school, you won't get a job because the co companies are not employing locals. We, we given, the, given the situation we're in, the Niger Delta is a completely different kind of fish from most parts of the world. I like the American people and people all over the world to realize there's a segment of humanity that's here in the Niger Delta suffering as a result of oil production. Ordinary men, women, children. They should think about them and not think simply of energy and all that, but think of them as people. That's more important than anything.
An excerpt from the upcoming documentary Sweet Crew, directed by filmmaker Sandy Siafi. She was in the Niger Delta last month finishing work on the film, was arrested by the Nigerian military along with her crew, held for a week before being released following international pressure. Her film is slated for completion this summer. Sandy Siafi joins us here in the Firehouse Studio. Welcome to Democracy Now! Good Who arrested you? Who detained you? Originally, we were arrested by the JTF, which stands for Joint Task Force. But after one day of the JTF holding us, our custody was switched to what's called the SSS, or State Security Services, which is very disconcerting because that's sort of the CIA, FBI, Homeland Security all rolled into one. Where were you? We were originally uh, just north of what's called Wari, Nigeria, and that's the creeks area of exactly where the oil is, is produced. And we were plucked from there taken to an army headquarters in Mori and then driven eight and a half hours to Abuja. Did they know who you were? Not when they first took us. Um, I think it might have been garden variety harassment, which local people deal with on a daily basis. I think it's important to say that even though Nigeria was officially a democracy as of 1999, in the Niger Delta it feels like an occupied land. So for regular people on the waterways, fishing, etc., they face daily harassment. We were just plucked, I think, probably for money, for some kind of... Um, it's possible that the JTF also stopped us because they might have had activities up in the waterway that day they didn't want us to see. But after they Googled us when they had us in detention and they saw the title of the film and my name and they looked online and saw some things, including actually a Democracy Now! Um, piece from a couple of years ago, they made it very clear that they didn't appreciate the perspective in the, in the film. And why did they release you? I, actually, I think we were very fortunate. I mean, when you consider that we were detained for one week when most Nigerian journalists face brutality that's a, at a whole other level, I think we were released because we had a lot of international pressure. I'd been working with some members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee trying to push them toward international mediation. And because they were aware of what we were doing and who we were, we actually had 14 lawmakers sign on to a letter to the president of the country. Um, I, I really feel incredibly lucky. I mean, there are journalists detained, as you know, I know you're working on that all over the world right now, including some by the U.S. So this is, a, you know, a very dangerous time to be someone working in a place where there's a story that people don't want told. So uh, I, I'm not only fortunate that these uh, lawmakers stepped up. I'd like to convert what they did into a, a net positive relative to the question of the human rights abuses of journalists. Sandy Siafi, can you talk about uh, this uh, demand of men, uh, movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta? Explain who they are and why they're calling on Jimmy Carter to intervene. Yeah, I think it has to be a, a fantastic twist to see a militant organization in a third world country that has been almost begging for international mediation. They were floating the idea that Barack Obama might intervene. Then they've been floating the idea that George Clooney could intervene once he was named the UN ambassador to, for peace. And now Jimmy Carter. MEND is uh, considered the sort of pan-Delta umbrella movement, almost an open source militant movement, if you will. There's been some controversy about whether MEND is mostly a criminal, corrupt gang of thugs or a legitimate political resistance. I would urge everyone to consider that it's not a spectator sport how this will play out. There are, like in any situation where there's so much abuse and so much cash, there are criminal and political elements. But if there is credible international mediation, then the criminal elements will be marginalized and the political elements will be more legitimized inside Nigeria. Um, I, I think it's not entirely unlike the Northern Ireland situation in 1997-98, where you had 11 splinter groups of the IRA, but when the Good Friday Peace Agreement came in, Sinn Féin elements of the IRA were able to win out. So I, I think if the Carter Center, Jimmy Carter, many of the other parties that have been called upon were to intervene, I think the federal government of Nigeria might be held to task for real, legitimate mediation. Do they also call on Barack Obama to intervene? They suggested that he did. Um, they float these ideas. They send a, um, a press release out, and they say Barack Obama is interested in intervening. Barack Obama hadn't initiated that, but my understanding is that he said, well, if it were an Obama administration, certainly the Niger Delta and other preventive diplomacy would be a, a part of that administration. Sandy Siafi, you have on your website an interview uh, between ABC's uh, Brian Ross and uh, MEND leader. Mm -hmm. uh, explain why that's there. 